Welcome to the Liberty Insider. This is a program designed to bring you news, views, discussion, insights, and up-to-date information all on religious liberty and the dynamics surrounding it. My name is Lincoln Steed, editor of Liberty Magazine, and my guest on this program is Kingsley Palmer. I have to remind yourself of myself of your name, and you, you told me the meaning of Palmer was uh, pilgrim, a pilgrim. <laughs> um, and you're a religious liberty uh, official, uh, designate from the Adventist church in, in uh, uh, Arizona, because Arizona, I was nearly going to say Nevada, the same mistake. Uh, but yeah, Pilgrim is a good, a, a, a good name. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's, let's talk about some of your life story. You, you're the, the son of immigrants, mm -hmm. and then you've moved from England to the US. Mm -hmm. So in a very real sense, you're a pilgrim and an immigrant. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what has that experience taught you generally? And, and let's try and relate it to religious sensibilities too. Well, um, moving here, uh, came here to study. And, and uh, here is at the 3 AVN studio in the United States. No, I came, in, came in to the United States um, 38 years ago wow. to pursue Christian education, to accept the call to ministry. And while here, I began to develop a, a broader mindset with respect to, well, yes, you are an immigrant. Yes, you are in an English-speaking country. But part of a culture, part of a, an ethnic group, right, whose stories, the history of our community, and I say our community because essentially whether you were born in England and you're from the islands or you were born and raised here in the African-American community, we have similar stories, similar experiences, different locations. So that was discovery for me in terms of my, my educational preparation and had no idea that I would be staying here as long as I did. But this, I've spent more time here integrated. I, I can say I'm African-American with a British twang or, uh, well, or what Africa's have you. Well, Africa's a few, uh, yes, well, a few we, miles back for you, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Do, do you know your, your family history? Yes, I know we came from West Africa, just like every other. Uh, but to uh, the West Indies. To the Caribbean. Caribbean. Some of the relatives were dropped off here. That's what I'm finding out. Mm. And so when, we, when I came here with a group of other young people back in 1980, we were amazed to see not just the resemblance, but a lot of the food, the culture, all those other things. And it was just like I'm rediscovering another part of my, who I was, who I, what I belonged to in a totally different place. That was very, very inspiring. Mm. Painful too, because there were some things that were not, that we, we could share stories about in terms of what, what has happened to us since we left Africa, the transatlantic uh, crossing, and how we were spread. Do you, do you, do, have you been able to recover details of how your relatives and some of those from the same area were taken or were? were well, what, what I do know, and it's interesting. Came part of this, yeah, you know, it, it, at that it, time, it, very sad story. Yes, what happened, you had a group of people on a boat taken from Africa, families, dispersed, some went into British colonies. But when you, you, you've got me thinking, does that mean they were from the same village? The same Many village? of them were from the same villages or the same areas, so but what, separated. So what was the dynamic? Because the, there's a variation. There were wars, there were, uh, there were uh, as, as even in Europe, through poverty, uh, some, sometimes people would deliver family members mm -hmm. to the system, figuring they, they couldn't care for them or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, other times the Arab traders uh, kidnapped people. There was a lot of kidnapping. Yeah, a lot of there was, funny there was, things going on. Yeah, it wasn't voluntary. Well, no. <laughs> exactly. Not by the individual, so we're, never. <laughs> depending on who owned you, you got the name of that family. Your relatives would be dispersed from Brazil to the Caribbean, 
to North America. Mm. And if you go to any of those places, you will see like-minded people that look the same, mm. but their context and their experiences might have been a little different. But the stories they are comparable, and that's what, I dis that's what I've discovered in the last 38 years here, that I have do a you, natural do connection. Do you know what uh, religious identity uh, those ancestors had when they came? It's kind of hard to, to know because um, you had a combination of um, missionaries going to Africa. Well, this you is know. why I'm asking the yes. question. Yes, you know, and, depend and, depend and, depend and depending on w where they came from and what they shared, you had a sense of, um, you, you kind of bought into their theology. But a lot of people don't know that people of African descent have known about God understood who he was, albeit in, their, in, in his different manifestations. So it, wasn't too un, it was not too uncommon, okay, we have served Jehovah from biblical times right up until now. Mm -hmm. But now this new religion, this new Christianity, this age of enlightenment, we, we accepted it. In fact, there's a saying that um, when some of the missionaries, and this is not for everyone, came to Africa, we, they ha we had the land, they had the Bible. Mm. When we left Africa, right? When they left Africa, we were left with the Bible. They but the they got the land. <laughs> and yeah. so, so w we've seen this interesting uh, yeah. trans transition. But to, to your question, when you say um, what religions we had, indigenous religions, but we well, also had- Well, I was asking the question because you know, it's the, the general historical assumption had been, when I was a kid studying all of this, that you know, these were animistic religions in Africa, but I know that's not true. Mm -hmm. There was a combination as today, mm -hmm. animistic religions, some peripheral connections with Christianity, but I think that was minimal at that point. Yes. And even Islam though was represented in, in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the background of some of these peoples. Yeah, so, they, they spread. Islam was probably more in the eastern part of the continent, yeah. Christianity, because of ge geographically speaking, mm -hmm. but was used as a tool yeah. to, unfortunately, to kidnap and uh, separate. And then we had variations of it when we came to the Western world and interpretations, misinterpretations, misapplications, which unfortunately um, kept us deprived. And there's the rest, as you well know, um, they say it's history, but there was a, a common understanding that we understood who God was in the mix of whatever else we believed. And, you know, well, you know very well, and you're explaining, you know, slavery and, and the whole trade uh, operated at the periphery of religion. Uh, Arabs were involved in one end of it, mm -hmm. Christians at the other, so there's, nobody yeah. gets off scot-free on, on this. No. And it's a very sad thing. but removing that, that religious element, it strikes me that, that in the modern world, hardly anybody really can know definitively where they came from. And everybody's, in the people groups they represented, we've come a long way to get where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our church was much fixated in its early uh, era in, dis in trying to decipher which of the, the 10 Germanic tribes made up the, uh, the history or the, mm -hmm. the modern nations of Europe, because even within recorded history, Europe was made up with often ravaging tribes that displaced another and violently did this and that mm -hmm. and the other. And, 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 and in recent history, like, you know, my, my uh, uh, mother uh, was born very shortly after her mother left Scotland, economic issues, you know, the Enclosure Acts mm -hmm. in England, you know, there's... Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 the grinding poverty of, of, of working people in England was unreal. And, and when, when they were driven off the, the land, which they'd barely uh, scrabbled a living off, hard scrabble living in, in better times, and, but with the Industrial Revolution, uh, public lands were fenced off and people had no way to get any living and they were off, floating off on the seas for another place. Uh, we've all, I, see, I think mankind as a whole has been a lost, Mm -hmm. wandering generation mm -hmm. but uh, and mistreated a lot but slavery is a unique 
Well, you know, it, 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 you had a okay. choice if you couldn't, you know, the, the Irish famine of the 1920s. I was about to mention that right? the potato famine. Yeah, that's what you know, the, the US benefited famine. from a lot but of it. But at least they had a choice. We didn't have a choice. Right. And that's the sad thing is, and well. the elements of that are still felt and experienced. I see it uh, as a pastor, as a community leader, every day, which feeds into what I was saying before about public affairs and religious liberty. They both work together very, very well yeah. when properly applied. However, there are realities that have come from systemic racism, sure. slavery, that we find ourselves, not just us, but other people, even of other religions and other ethnic persuasions, yeah. The, are, are the same. So that's very real to me. Yeah. And being a pilgrim in America, it has been eye-opening for me. It has been emotional for me. It has been transformative yeah. for me in my ministry in doing what I do. Yeah. And, and you know, I was trying to draw a little parallel, not, in the, not, a, not, a, not, a, not a, an equivalence, right. but a comparison that, 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 that I think a lot of people in the Western world are basically dispossessed wanderers well, yeah. from, from their origin, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and as it was very hard for, for people descended from slaves to sort of recover a sense of self and identity mm -hmm. and origin. Mm -hmm. But it can be, uh, most people don't think about it, that's the problem, mm -hmm. but when they try, they don't have it. And the US, I think, is suffering from part of this, mm -hmm. <laughs> back to my preoccupations with the US. In England, there's a sense, in Europe, there's a sense of, even if you might have come and gone, but this, there's a permanence. You, you mentioned Parliament and another program. It goes mm -hmm. back a thousand years. Don't have that in, in, in America. So what do you substitute? Sort of a mythical uh, uh, sort of sense of destiny. Mm -hmm. And that sort of comes and goes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, the, but the US is, very, is struggling to create this sense of who they are. Uh, the, the Europeans don't know. And I studied US history. There's huge denial of the role of convict uh, settlement mm -hmm. in the US. Mm -hmm. Australia can't deny it. In fact, the glory in it. You know? yeah, well, the British set that, that up, as you well know, yeah. Botany uh, Bay and that, right. that sort of and, thing. And it's not the majority of, of Australians, never was, nor in the US. But mm -hmm. the US doesn't even seem to know that part of its history. Mm -hmm. There was gross inhumanity, class struggles and all the rest. People sent uh, some for their life, but generally for a set term. And that's the d huge distinction between slavery and, mm -hmm. and the convict thing. You, you know, for 10 years, you were treated like dirt and an animal mm -hmm. and killed at will, pretty much. Uh, but once that was over, then you get a bit of land and you could have other... But, there, but there's something else. But it up. created a sense of dispossession, I believe. Mm -hmm. There, you know... Like there's that song, you know, blacks, farewell to old England forever. <laughs> Botany I, Bay, I, it's... I, <laughs> well, I know. We used to sing the song in school about <laughs> Botany Bay until I found out what it was. But here's what is interesting, discovered in my discovery here, is that b black people came to the United States long before the Europeans set foot in the, in the US as we speak, as, as, we, as we know. And then subsequent generations, of course, were enslaved and then the other things that we had talked about. So we've always had, and I think that's with any group, some idea on who we were as human beings, mm. believing in something greater and bigger than ourselves. And that is why you will see that in the, exp particularly when it comes to worship and expression and how we see society through our lens. Remember I was talking about uh, in the previous program about our perception or understanding and the application of what public affairs and religious liberties means. As far as, as a public affairs activity, it's the community. It's the God in the form of Jesus doing certain things mm -hmm. across all lines, across all groups, and engaging with, with the public, and at the same time having this wonderful message that we have based uh, upon prophecy and revelation that pulls us together. Good point. Uh, we'll take a break now, and so stay with us, and we'll be back to continue the pilgrimage. Welcome back to the Liberty Insider. Uh, before the break, uh, uh, with guest Kingsley, we were uh, we were on your pilgrimage. That's correct. Uh, so, where, 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 where did you? Where are you going? Where did you come from? Again, to, you'll have to repeat a little and then mm -hmm. pick up on mm -hmm. 
on, 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 on a literal story, but I think you're creating a, a, a symbolic mm -hmm. structure here for, for a, a search for identity and a finding of an identity. Mm -hmm. As I am told, West African ancestry, the migration of um, my people, um, mm -hmm. Africans to the Western Hemisphere, the settling in of uh, under slavery from Brazil to the Caribbean to America, all one family, mm. different, different tribes, but essentially one, one group of people. And in coming here to go to school, to study for theology and things like that, and living in those neighborhoods, in those communities, I have found a commonality in terms of the struggle, in terms of the challenges. I've been able to connect things that I grew up in and watched in England, mm. of all places, that uh, the story is very similar here in these United States, you know, in terms of integration, acceptance, fairness, equality, all those other things. It manifested itself differently in Britain, but we had a form of Jim, well, you I know, would think that, in that England kind of it would, the problem would have been more uh, 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 cultural impediments to integration or to uh, full acceptance. Mm -hmm. Where in the U.S., even in my memory, because I came to the U.S. in the civil rights era, there were actual laws designed to uh, mm -hmm. make it hard for certain groups, particularly mm -hmm. African Americans. The British didn't make laws. That's as what I'm such, guessing. Yeah, but. It was unspoken. Oh, I'm certain. There, I, my father would tell me that when he got to England, there was a list of there would be a list of individuals who they did not want living in communities, and right below, just above, blacks were dogs. Mm. And so, <laughs> you understood, or at least he understood, as an immigrant, there was a place for him, which was nowhere near the middle, let alone the highest. And so here I am, born into a, a, a system where you had a grammar stream in terms of education, and then you had the comprehensive stream. And most people of color or of other ethnic persuasions were down at the bottom. And the expectation was that once you finished high school, or if you did progress to go on to college, the most you could ever be in the British workforce was maybe an assistant or a supervisor, but beyond that, to break the mold and to, go, to move higher, that was a no-go. So, and I saw a similar thing here. And that's improved a lot in England. In the well, it has. I mean, it still leaves much to Visibly, be Visibly, I think it's improved because, you know, visibly. Well, yes, like but you now, have a, you now have a generation of young people. There's my, I have my children, and then they're their children who are growing up and feeling disenfranchised and because the educational system is not provide, although it, it's still fairly good, the jobs are not there, there's social unrest. In the 80s, they had the riots going on and so on and so forth, almost, uh, almost typical to what we had here in the 50s and the 60s. I grew up in the, fifth, in the 60s and the 70s, so I, just, I could compare let me throw that, that, a, that, that, a, a real wild journey. card into it, no, like your opinion. I know that in the US, mm -hmm. Uh, there's, in the past and perhaps still, there's a strong sentiment in, in some African American communities mm -hmm. that, that, in spite of the experience, or at least the cliche from, uh, from the Deep South days of the, of the, uh, the spirituals and Negro spirituals mm -hmm. and, and Christian worship, mm -hmm. there, there's sort of a sentiment now that Christianity is not the most natural religion for the descendants of those people that, that in accepting and advancing Christianity, they're, they're uh, sort of playing along with the game and they should re reject the religion of the, uh, that ins once enslaved them. And uh, so the appeal is very strong for Islam or for nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I remember once interrupting a group of, of uh, uh, African-American pastors down mm -hmm. south. I won't say where, but you could guess. <laughs> and they were in mm -hmm. vigorous debate. Right. Uh, uh, pretty much two factions divided. And when I came upon them, they shut up like mm -hmm. that, just because mm -hmm. I came around the corner on them. 
And I said, what are you talking about? And, and uh, first nothing, and then one says, why don't we ask him? Mm -hmm. So I found that they were discussing whether or not uh, Christianity or Islam was the most appropriate religion mm -hmm. for uh, blacks in America today. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's a reasonable discussion, but it shocked me that here, these were Christian ministers of a certain denomination that were actively debating. <laughs> well, so the appeal he, he, is very real. And I know the history of, of black Muslims mm -hmm. They're not really Muslims in the sense that any uh, uh, orthodox, for want of a better word, Muslim in the rest of the world would accept them. It's a very hybrid thing, and it's be-all and the end-all really is, is a rejection and an alternate spiritual and, and historic universe from Christianity and, and, and the West. Well, again, um, if we think of Malcolm X, right who who in a way yeah but, but, uh, but reacted against that yes he did but That's initially why he was killed, yeah. we all know how he yeah. started out yeah. but i think we need to remember that as i said before black people have always have an under, always had an understanding and interpretation for our cultural experiences in africa and since we moved to the western hemisphere as to how we perceived and understood god now you have to remember that the British at that time, while this was all going on in Africa, brought a certain kind of religion, Protestant actually, yeah. and so taught people from, certain people from Africa in their colonies a certain way of worship. It was a little more conservative, right? But we still had those um, ways in which we would communicate what our experience and our theology through experience. Well, it was similar. No sim question, it was an element of religious imperialism. Right, it was. And, 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 and part of the answer, I think, is to disengage or disconnect mm -hmm. uh, the faith fr from the, the, mm -hmm. the imperialist or the cultural trappings. Right. It's the only way you can survive. Well, that's true, but at, not at the expense of you losing your own, right? Your own right. identity. Right. And so here you had. Um, <clears throat> we've always been, no matter where you go, you will always find elements of the same thing, be it in Jamaica, be it here in the, the United States or elsewhere. It, it's interesting how that is still pretty much in place. And so when you have people that have come from the continent of Africa who have been more conservative and more Protestant in terms of their, their dialogue, in terms of what they believe, and you've got this more expressive, you know, the Gospels, the Negro spirituals, and all that expression. We are very expressive people, no matter where you find us. And <clears throat> interpreting our experience or our pilgrimage through what we have seen and what we've been through is a little more, le less conservative. And the conflict, and, 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 and we've had to do that to maintain and to sustain our identity theologically, socially, culturally, but it, it all comes together. I have found that there are more similarities than there are the, um, differences. And I will say this, sometime, and, and this is what I, my father told me when he left the Caribbean, went to England, and he was taught to view people from Africa as being lower, the dark continent, as it were. And it wasn't until he got to England and began to meet with and mingle with, we even had families that lived in the same house. And we understood, wait, this is your story. This is my story. Here's our story. And move on from there. Same thing has happened. And unfortunately, here. we all move on. Like I've gone back to Australia uh, to live for a while and I enjoyed it. But it, mm -hmm. in some ways, I. It was a different Australia, and I was sort of, well, of somewhat of an outsider. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that uh, uh, African Americans, for want of a better term, these terms mm -hmm. become less acceptable, I guess, in the US, they don't necessarily have as strong an affinity with uh, uh, people in Africa as they might want, because they've, they've been culturally changed in, in many, many, many And areas. intentionally divided. Yes, part of it was intentional. Well, most of it, I think a lot of it was. Yeah. And that's why you, you, you know, the meeting of the minds or the, 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 the comparison or contrast of how we do what we do in terms of our, in terms of how we experience but the, God. But the good part of this is that, yeah, God can be rediscovered. He's not owned by any culture. Thank right? God for that. <laughs> uh, yes. And uh, we might be quite shocked to discover the culture of heaven. That's probably uh, 
radically different from all well, it was. It's got to be better than what we've got down here. But, uh, yeah, but thanks for sharing your, your, your pilgrimage. Yes, and, I'm still uh, on it. Yeah, well, we're all on it. It's I'm like someone it. once uh, came into a town and, and asked someone, oh, have you lived here all your life? And they said, no, not yet. <laughs> So, yes. so uh, any parting words on your, on your, your... My journey to the United States has enabled me to understand who I am and connect with the community that I now serve. And I'm thankful to God for all of that. I'm still on that journey. Growing up in Australia, I often remember singing along to the song, Land of Hope and Glory, Mother of the Free. Uh, very many people think of their homeland as a mother, although Germany, I guess, the fatherland. Uh, but there's a, a source of freedom that we often ascribe to the country and to the home and hearth and so on. But it's worth remembering in this modern world where we've all come from somewhere else by and large, and the world is still an ongoing melting pot and, and differences are being broken down right, left and centre, that the source of our liberty, the source of our freedom can't be the land it can't be even a people, it must be a God, it must be a principle. And that principle, the freedom of, of conscience that we cherish so dearly, needs to be defended and recognised for such a transcendent thing as it is. For Liberty Insider, this is Lincoln Steed. <laughs>